Hi, I'm Patricia and I'm a senior mechanical engineering student. Hi, my name is Caitlin and I'm a junior chemical engineering student. Hi, my name is Catherine and I'm a sophomore civil engineering student. Today we'll be showing you how to code in Scratch. Scratch is a type of beginner's coding that will allows you to practice the concepts of coding that is still relevant for more advanced coding software like Python, MATLAB, or Java. To teach you guys about coding, we'll be showing you how to code a simple ping pong video game using Scratch. Coding is a very important because it is the basis of many programs that you use every day. For example, an engineer can create a program that controls a website. Coding can also be used to create something more complex like a computer or phone. A coding program, though less advanced than Python or even MATLAB, can be used to create a robot. Coding can be found everywhere, so learning to code can be a valuable skill. So now let's start building our game. So first we need to choose our sprites. We need a ball sprite, and we also need a paddle sprite. Make sure you delete the cat sprite from your window. Then you can choose a background. If you switch to the stage box, you can choose any background you want. Now for our game, we need to add a small rectangle at the bottom of our screen to show the area where the ball is out of bounds. You can change the rectangle to any color you'd like. You don't want the box to be too big, so the ball has plenty of space to move around. Now you're going to want to switch back to your coding window so we can start the code for the ball. The first thing you want to do is go to the Events tab. Click the when flag is clipped, clicked block and drag it into your window. Next, go to the motion tab and select a go to X and Y position block. This will put your ball wherever you want your ball to start. Then add a point and direction block that tells the ball where you want what direction you want the ball to move in. You can choose any number you want. Next, go to the control tab and select a forever block. A forever block will keep your code going until you stop playing the game. Next, go back to the motions tab and pick a move 10 steps block. You're going to want to put this block inside your forever loop. Next, select, select a if on edge bounce block. 
This will make sure your ball doesn't fly away. We've just finished the first section of our code. Now we're going to add another code block. You're going to want to select another when flagged is clicked block in the events tab. Then go to the control tab and select a forever block and add it under the when flag is clicked block. Next, you're going to want to add, add an in if then block and put it inside your forever block. Then you want to go to the sensing tab and select a touching color block and put it inside the if block. You want to select the little eyedropper tool at the bottom of the tab and select your ground. Go to the variables tab. Click make a variable and call it score. Make sure you check the box next to score so that it shows up on your screen. Grab a change variable block and place it in the if block. Then change the variable to score and the number to negative one. It is negative because when the ball touches the ground, you lose a point. Next, go to the sound tab and grab a start sound block. You can choose any sound you would like. Next, go to the motion tab and select a point in direction block. Choose the direction to be negative 45. Go to the control tab and select a wait seconds block. Change the time to two seconds. We do this to make sure that the score is counted correctly. Now we need to make one more block of code for our ball. Go to the events tab and select another when flag is clicked block. Then go to the variables tab and select the set my, my variable to zero block. Make sure you change the variable to score. Next, go to the control tab and select a forever block. Then select an if then block. Then go to the sensing tab and select a touching block. Change it to paddle. Go back to the variables tab. Select a change variable by one block and put it inside your if block. Change my variable to score. Next, go to the sound tab.
select a start sound block. You can choose any sound you'd like. Go to the motion tab and select a point and direction block. You can change the direction to num any number you'd like. Next, go to the control tab. Select a wait seconds block and change the time to two seconds. So this makes sure your score is counted correctly. Now we can move on to the code for our paddle. Go to the events tab and select when flag is clicked. Next, you wanna drag your paddle to the ground that we created, so just so it sits right on top. Next, you wanna to go to the motion tab and select a set Y. Because you moved the paddle, it will set the number for you. Next, go to the control tab. Select a forever block. Then go to the motion tab and select a set X2 block. Then you want to go to the Sensing tab and select the mouse block. You want to put the mouse block where the number would go. This lets you control the paddle with your mouse. Now we can play our game. You can make it full screen by clicking the button in the right hand corner and then make sure you click the flag to start your game. We hope you learned a lot and we hope you have fun with your new game. Go Cougs! Go Cougs! Go Cougs. <laughs>